This is Fuchs corneal endothelial dystrophy. If we think about the layers of the cornea, there are five main layers we consider. There's the epithelium, and that's there to protect us from infections. In its basement membrane, the Bowman's layer. There's the stroma, which composes the bulk of the cornea. It is largely composed of collagen fibrils. Followed by that, there's decimates membrane and the endothelium. The endothelium playing a critical component in maintaining hydration of the cornea. The endothelium itself provides the pump function for the cornea, and it keeps the stroma itself relatively dehydrated. The stroma is typically around 80% hydrated, and that's because the endothelium pumps out water at all times from that cornea. Now, there are other factors that affect the hydration, the pressures of the eye, and a few other factors, but it's critical that the corneal collagen and those fibrils that are in the stroma maintain a constant size and alignment. We have examples here on the right of collagen fibrils that are in, in good alignment. They're all equidistant from each other. When that occurs, it allows for the cornea to maintain clarity. When those collagen fibrils get out of alignment, they begin to scatter light. And the reason why that is, is that light, when you're at perfectly spaced, all constructively or destructively interferes with itself, allowing for clarity. When those things become irregular, they scatter light and things start to appear white and not clear. Now here's two pictures of that. The lower image is of an eye that has clarity, and that's because the stromal fibrils are in proper alignment because they're hydrated properly from the endothelium. On the right image, we have scarring and we have started to have a pacification of the cornea because those fibrils are no longer in its proper alignment and structure. The endothelium, endothelium itself exists at a, a high level when we're young and we slowly lose endothelial cells over the course of our lifetime, and that's a natural part of aging. At birth, we have approximately 3,000 endothelial cells per square millimeter, and that decreases by the age of 80 years old to having about 2,000 endothelial cells per square millimeter. Now, as we lose cells, what happens is those endothelial cells grow in size, so they get become polymagnetism or larger and irregular in size to keep up with that area and to cover the entire endothelial surface. Now, if we lose an abnormal number in endothelial cells, this could be due to genetics, could be due to surgery, we have something called Fuchs corneal endothelial dystrophy. When that occurs, we no longer have proper pump function, and so the cornea no longer stays hydrated to the proper level. And what we see is the first thing that starts to happen is the cornea swells. As we lose those endothelium, we're not pumping out the water, so more water rushes in, and the cornea gets, cornea gets thicker. Now here's an example of a normal cornea, which has about a 550 corneal thickness overall. With Fuchs dystrophy, as we get, get higher and have higher levels of Fuchs dystrophy, the corneal thickness increases to six, seven, eight hundred microns. And what this ultimately does is it changes the radius of curvature of that, that cornea. Well, with Fuchs, we also have a, a secondary problem. If we remember, the cornea gets most of its oxygen from the environment. And when we close our eyes, the cornea itself gets less oxygen. Now, that actually impairs endothelial pump function, but with normal cell counts, that's not a big issue. When we close our eyes, the eye gets less oxygen, and so the endothelium now, during the morning, have not kept up, and so the cornea is even more swollen in the morning compared to night. And what that results in is not only that myopic shift we see from the cornea getting thicker, but also means there's diurnal changes in refractive error. Patients with Fuchs will exhibit, on average, about a half diopter of more myopia in the morning. But that can be up, up to even one and a half diopters for more severe types of Fuchs. Now, there's also the problem of loss of, op of opacity of the cornea, which actually scatters light. And that's a secondary problem that we also have to deal with. Now, the first steps in using, dealing with Fuchs is using exterior methods to maintain hydration. If you read a textbook, the, the classical method would be to use a hair dryer on the eye to dry out that cornea. So when a patient wakes up, they could use a hair dryer 
and hopefully they will reduce that swelling quickly. Now, from my experience with patients, this is not a useful method for very long, and it's pretty inconvenient. The next step is using hyperosmotic drops to actually pull water out through osmosis. And that's an example here of Mural 128, where they're using essentially salt water drops, right? They're sodium chloride drops. And they install these drops in their eye, and the salt fluid hopefully pulls out water from the cornea. Now, there's an obvious problem with that, that putting salt water on the eye burns. Now, when methods of maintaining proper corneal hydration fail, you're start, going to start to see those large refractive shifts, shifts that are occurring. And so sometimes you need to consider prescribing a refractive compromise. So as an example, if a patient is a four diopter myop in the morning and a two and a half diopter myop in the evening, you might consider prescribing in between those two at three and a quarter diopters. This person puts the person about half to, three quarters of a diopter off in any point of the day at the worst. That though leaves them as functional vision where they see approximately 2040. And remember, functional vision helps us with driving, bringing around 2040, can, we can drive, we can read most pr normal printed text at 2040. So at times, you'll have to actually consider a, a refractive prescribing compromise that maximizes their functionality, even though you can't make their vision perfect at any one time of the day. You might think you can over minus some of these patients, and they'll just accommodate through it. But this is largely a disease of people over the age of 60. They do not have accommodation. So over-minusing is really not an option for the vast majority of people with Fuchs. And a person under the age of 40 that still has accommodation would have a very severe form of Fuchs if they were having it. Now, ultimately, this corneal swelling leads to blisters of the epithelium called bullae, which can be painful. It also leads to dry, which you have to manage using artificial tears and other methods. When the bullae break, you need to consider using antibiotics to prevent against infection. But ultimately, all this starts to cause scar scarring and permanent swelling to the cornea, which permanently blocks vision. At that point, you need to consider corneal transplants of various types. Thank you.